Okay, so have you ever wondered what information Google keeps on you? Because of course they keep the information based on your searches on your phone or on your computer. Now you can actually see what kind of file they have on you, yeah. which is pretty cool, Winston. And I mean, we use Google every day. I mean, I use it for my email, I use it for my search, I use it for countless, uh, Google owns YouTube. Uh, many mm -hmm. of you probably don't even know that. So the information Google is mining from you is probably quite alarming, and you don't actually see it to understand. So Google yeah. has this new feature uh, called My Activity that kind of brings some transparency to what you are searching online. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, I've signed into my own account here. And you can see uh, there are a couple things that you should definitely check out. One, on the left-hand side, there's an a, a section called Connected Apps and Sites. Mm -hmm. And what this allows you to do is, is basically manage what uh, Google is signed into online. And it's a little blurry on the screen there. But basically, uh, once it is filled out, and because this is kind of my test dummy account, um, it, there's not much on here, but you can see that Google has access to uh, certain website logins that you have set up, certain apps that you click, just sign in with Google. Right. And you can revoke access to things that you might not want them to still have access to. So uh, whether that's something you downloaded back in 2012 that you forgot they had access to, you can do so, um, you can do so right within the app. The other thing that you can also do is right at the bottom, and I'll scroll up because you can see full screen here, it's just uh, in the middle here where it says My Activity. If you click go to my activity, what it, what it will do is essentially pull up a chronological list of everything you've searched. Now, uh, again, because this is my test dummy account, this pulls up some older information here. But like Call you, Me Maybe by Carly Rae Jepsen? Apparently, July 20th, <laughs> uh, 2012, I searched for a, a spoof of Carly Rae Jepsen's Call Me Maybe. It's a good song. So, so, uh, but that's just that's just one search. But there yeah. might be some other searches that you might not want Google knowing. Right. You can go through and you can selectively clear your searches, or you can clear all of your searches from Google's uh, Google's database. Wow. And so this kind of answers the question as to sometimes I don't know if you notice you might let's say search for a vacation or a hotel on Google, and then you notice that the next day. You, it pops up, there's an ad yeah. about that hotel or about that destination, right? So it's all based on your searches, and that's how yeah. they get it. They make some ad money. This is unrelated mm -hmm. to Google, but I notice this happens a lot with yeah. Facebook where I'm searching for something, yeah. and uh, you know, the, the next time around I'm back on Facebook, it, it, uh, an ad pops up for something that is related to that search. So that yes. goes back to this, where uh, you basically control what the search giant has on you, and you can clear uh, the information as needed. Okay, good stuff. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to talk about this again, and I'm going to mutter really quietly. Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go. Don't tell We're me still anybody. talking about it. We talked about it a little earlier, but Pokemon Go is now available in Canada. We've been talking about it for quite a bit now. Uh, and, and some of you have been holding out until it was officially available in Canada. Now you can get it. It is the number one app in the App Store, understandably. Uh, there are a bunch of spin-off apps that are also Pokemon Go related and also up in the charts as well. Uh, but you can download it. So much demand that it basically crashed the servers for a little bit. It should be back up and running. But uh, there is a meetup happening tonight at 8 yes. p.m. at the CN Tower. And they've been doing some of these official meetup launches where there's some rare Pokemons uh, available for, for capture. And um, they're everywhere. Have you tried it yet? Have I tried yeah. Pokemon? I have, okay. and I got a demo of the app, and okay. I and I, I have played a little bit. Am I obsessed with it? No, no. Not, not so much. No, I'm I'm very much the type of person that goes against hype, though. When there's a lot yeah. of hype around something, mm -hmm. I'm like. I, I can't do it. But yeah. I, I tweeted this picture out, by the way. I, on the weekend, I was walking by this <laughs> this bar, and they had this uh, they had this sign outside that said "Rare Pokemon Inside." So businesses are her. even looping in and, and trying to reel in some of this Pokemon Go success. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of hot dog vendors tonight are going to be making their money's worth down at the oh CN Tower. Oh boy! Yeah. Yep. Uh, sure. And the other thing, yesterday mm -hmm. was World Emoji Day, yes. and Twitter Canada had put out uh, a list of the 10 most popular and favorite emojis uh, in Canada. And, uh, you know, with no surprise, you know, the laughing, crying emoji is one of, uh, is number one. Mm -hmm. uh, the smiley with the heart eyes, the crying, number three. Um, number four, the heart, and then the smiley face, number five, and then these are the top ten. That rounds out the top ten here. I'm surprised there's not just the regular winky face. I like the winky face. I, I like the winky face. I use the winky face a lot. Yeah, and uh, I, I tweeted it out, and a lot of people were surprised the smiley poop wasn't in this top ten that list too. as well. It's smiley poop. One of Dina's top favorites. So. <laughs> All right, well, Russ, what's your, oh, no, actually, we're not going to Russ today. We'll ask him after. We'll ask him after, we'll ask him after yeah. what his favorite is for sure. We'll head to break here for now on BT. More Breakfast Television when we come back. Stay with us.